God, I should have lowered the table. Hey guys, CJ from Elevated Systems, and man, do I have a treat for you today. Say hello to the Dubilly from Inwin. When I caught a glimpse of this bad boy at CS earlier this year, I was like, I need that. So when I saw it was available, I shot a message over to Inwin and boom, here it is. Now, the Dubilly is one of Inwin's DIY cases that can be assembled from scratch, but to my surprise, Inwin sent me one all set up ready to go, I was kind of hoping to flex my assembly muscles and even got their fancy app ready. But hey, for those of you who'd rather skip building your case and jump straight into PC building, this is golden. Still, being me, I had to tinker. I flipped those foot rails up top for some sweet handles and slapped on those optional plastic feet. Because this beast weighs in at over 30 pounds and I wanted those handles up top to more easily manhandle this thing. I'll get into the weight and build quality in detail in a bit, but first, let's walk through the Dabili specs and features. I'll show you what fits and what doesn't, share my build notes, the pros and cons, we'll look at its thermal performance, and of course, I'll wrap things up with my final thoughts on the value of Inwin's Dubilly. Let's get started. The Inwin Dubilly is a robust full tower ATX case. Its dimensions are 523 millimeters in length, 240 millimeters in width, and 543 millimeters in height. When in feet mode, switch it to handles mode and the height extends to 567 millimeters. When it comes to motherboard compatibility, it's versatile, accommodating up to the broadest EATX form factors. The case can fit CPU tower coolers up to 160 millimeters, graphics card as long as 430 millimeters, and ATX power supplies with a maximum length of 180 millimeters. Pre-installed in the case are four Inwin Jupiter AJ 140 millimeter fans, three at the front, and one at the rear. For additional cooling, it can house either two 140 millimeter or three 120 millimeter top mounted fans and either a single 140 millimeter or two 120 millimeter fans at the bottom. Liquid cooling enthusiasts will appreciate its support for a 360 millimeter top mounted radiator and an impressive 420 millimeter radiator at the front. On the storage side, there are four removable drive trays at the back. Each tray can hold either a single two and a half inch hard drive or can be configured with two 3.5 inch hard drives on the bottom trays. A separate optional bracket on the bottom left side of the case provides space for an extra SSD. The front I.O. panel is equipped with a power button, two 5 gigabit type A ports, and up to a 20 gigabit type C port, and a headset jack. The rear features eight bridgeless PCIe expansion slots. Both left tinted tempered glass and right steel panels are firmly secured with custom stainless steel bolts. For dust prevention, there are magnetically attached filters on the top, bottom, and behind the airflow focused front panel. For cable management, the right side of the case offers ample depth and a few tie down points. There are strategically placed large grommeted pass throughs and several small non grommeted ones. Finally, the case includes an RGB and fan hub. The Dubility is available in two finishes the titanium gray, which I have, and champagne gold. As for pricing, currently the DIY version is set at $230 US, while the pre assembled variant goes for $250. Usually, this is the part where I dive into my build notes, but with the Dubilly, I have to kick things off with its standout feature, the build quality and materials. Weighing it at a hefty 33 pounds, you'll immediately sense the sturdiness the moment you lift it. The case boasts a construction of 1.4 millimeter powder coated steel combined with four millimeter aluminum. For a bit of context, many decent PC cases are crafted from 0.6 millimeter steel. The higher tier ones might use 0.75 millimeter or 22 gauge mild steel, but the Dubilly, it's in a league of its own. The premium materials come together seamlessly, resulting in a flawlessly aligned and robust enclosure. I'd wager the case could stand the test of time, easily housing the next five systems you decide to build. Okay guys, let's dive into the build experience with the Inwin Dubilly. First off, this case is massive, even more so than the specs suggest. Now, when I spotted that the CPU tower cooler max height was pegged at 160 millimeters, 
I had a moment to pause. Not that I'm suggesting everyone's going air cooled with this beast, but such a height could potentially limit the graphics card you could slot in, especially when you think about the monsters like those RTX 4090s, which hover around or even exceed that 160 millimeter mark. And let's not forget, many high-end cards need a bit more wiggle room, especially when you factor in those chunky power cables. But to my delight, there's an extra 22 millimeters of clearance above my 160 millimeter cooler, ensuring compatibility with even the tallest of components. Speaking of graphics cards, Inwin has thrown in a GPU support bracket. This is great for those of you rocking those hefty graphics cards, ensuring they stay level and preventing that unsightly sag. Now, for those of you eyeing a top-mounted radiator, you're in luck. Ram height won't be an issue, but here's a heads up. The radiator position overlaps the motherboard's VRM heatsink. With less than 25 millimeters of clearance, you might have to rethink a dual fan push-pull configuration if your VRM heatsink towers above a 25 millimeter mark. But fear not, the case is all about accommodating size, while the official stats claim it supports up to a 330 millimeter wide EATX board, which is pretty standard nowadays, there's more under the hood, with additional standoffs and pass-throughs, even those quirky oversized dual CPU motherboards should feel right at home in here. Lastly, a design choice that might catch your eye is the absence of a power supply shroud. Yep, your PSU is on full display, but Inwin has thought this through, incorporating a strategically placed grommeted cable pass-through. This ensures your PSU cables make a swift and discreet exit to the motherboard's rear, keeping things clean and tidy. While this is one of the strong points of the case's cable management system, ironically, cable management also turned out to be one of the biggest weaknesses. On the front side, there's an abundance of pass-throughs for cables, especially on the bottom left and right of the motherboard, but puzzlingly, there's a glaring omission, a pass-through in the bottom center of the motherboard. This would be ideal for accessing those mid-board fan and USB connectors, not to mention the PCI 5.0 connectors that are becoming standard on the center of many new graphics cards. Flipping to the back, I was let down to find a mere four cable tie-down points. Sure, they throw in Velcro straps and zip ties, but I find myself mostly bundling cables and relying on the rear panel to keep them in check. Another hiccup, the included fan hub. I'd label it a dumb hub because it's essentially an eight-way fan and RGB splitter with supplemental SATA power. On paper, it's great. One motherboard fan and RGB header can control up to eight case fans, but in practice, while the RGB lighting was on point, the fans were a no-show. My motherboard just didn't recognize them. Without that crucial PWM signal, the hub went rogue, cranking all the fans to max speed. After a good deal of troubleshooting, I resorted to disconnecting the fans from the hub and daisy-chaining them together. Lastly, as much as I appreciate the Dubilly sleek industrial design, those four hex bolts on the side panels, a bit of a hassle. I get the aesthetic choice and I completely agree with it, but practically, eh, case in point, when the fans went full throttle, I had to fetch an Allen wrench, undo the bolts, make adjustments, and bolt it all back up. And during that adjustment, my front panel power cable got caught in a GPU fan, leading to another round of unbolting. Now, with the huge internal volume and four 140 millimeter fans, as you might have guessed, the thermal performance of the case is outstanding. Comparing my standard test system inside the Dubilly to on an open air test bench, here's the results. On an average of three separate 20 minute ADA 64 stress tests, the CPU temperature dipped by one degree, while the VRM temperatures saw a more significant drop of five degrees. Meanwhile, after running three 20 minute port royal loops, the GPU's thermal performance remained rock steady. But here's the more impressive thing. Typically, my case fan curve peaks at 90%. However, with the Dubility's Jupiter fans, while they deliver huge amounts of airflow, they can get a tad noisy when revving above 80%.
So I tweaked the curve to cap at 80% RPM at a CPU temp of 100 degrees. Even so, the Dubili still outperformed most of the cases I've reviewed. All right, folks, after diving deep into the Inwin Dubili PC case, it's time to wrap up my thoughts. First and foremost, the build quality and materials of the case are truly exceptional. From its robust weight to the use of premium materials like thick powder coated steel and aluminum, the Dubili stands out as a testament to Inwin's craftsmanship and commitment to quality. When you pick it up, you can immediately feel the heft and solidity, and it's clear that this case is built to last. Now, about that $230 price tag, I know it might seem steep at first glance, but let's put things into perspective. I'm currently scratch building a tiny 9-liter PC case, and just the materials alone have set me back nearly $100, and that's without the intricate design, manufacturing, and quality control that goes into products like the Dubili. So when you consider the top tier materials and craftsmanship that went into this case, that $230 starts to look a little more reasonable. You're not just paying for a box to house your components, you're investing in a durable premium enclosure that could very well outlast several of your future PC builds. Now, let's talk about the design. The Dubili boasts an excellent and refined aesthetic that can't help but remind one of the Apple Mac Pro a little, albeit with less of that cheese grater vibe. While the Mac Pro's design has been a topic of humor and memes in the tech community, many do recognize its practical benefits and the Dubili seems to take a page out of that book. It offers a unique look that's both functional and stylish. Of course, no product is perfect. Yes, I did find some issues with the Dubili, but it's my job as a reviewer to nitpick. That said, none of the issues I uncovered are deal breakers. However, the non-functional fan hub does deserve a mention. It's always disappointing when a feature doesn't work as it should, but a quick incognito email to Inwin's customer service, and I've got a replacement hub on the way. Props to Inwin for their swift response. In conclusion, the Inwin Dubili is a shining example of what a PC case can be when built with passion, precision, and premium materials. It's a worthy investment for those who value quality and durability, and while it's not without its quirks, the overall package is compelling, especially if you're looking for a case that makes a statement. Thanks for joining me today. Be sure to drop a comment with your thoughts on the Inwin Dubili. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more tech DIY and reviews. And I'll catch you in the next one.